Hello, this is Olivier de Rivière, the uh, composer of A Black Tale Requiem and Innocence. Uh, welcome to this uh, analysis of the music. Uh, I'm doing something uh, very, let's say, uh, naturally. So don't expect a, an amazing YouTube channel. But uh, I'll go uh, chapter after chapter and uh, I will explain what were the choices with the team why uh how we made this you know and little secrets uh, one of the secret is this one the whole production of you know i was finishing dying light 2 as we were already working on a black tail requiem and techland has sent me uh t-shirts for dying light 2 and you know i had like tons of t-shirts and so every day i was i would wear those t-shirts not because i wanted to it's just because you know in the morning i don't think and i take whatever is there and i don't see it because it, you know it's it's black so i take it i put it on and i don't see myself and so at some point they were so mad at me sobo to see like dying light 2 dying light 2 every day not that they don't like the game it's just like you know they were like that they sent me 10 t-shirts you know of a plague tale and today, by coincidence, I didn't do it on purpose. There you go, Dying Light 2. So hi, guys from Techland. And uh, hopefully, guys from uh, Sobo will uh, forgive me. All right, let's do it. So new game, uh, difficulty. I'm going to go narrative because I don't want anything to bother me much. Also, what I would like to do is uh, get the um, dialogues down. Yes, uh, because we're going to talk a lot about the music. Uh, sound effects as well. Uh, I mean, I hope you won't mind Aurélien, the audio director. And uh, there we go. Let's dive into it. Uh, where is it? Here. Let's do it. So the main title is just the the full story in one song. Uh, I will I will explain more about the main title in a different video later. So the first chapter, uh, they wanted, so David and Kevin, they wanted to start with something that was like uh, lighthearted and to sort of twist already the gamers. It was like, okay, let's, let's play with them, with the gamers, and let's pretend that something bad is happening as if, you know, innocence was not just far from uh, this sequence. So the music takes the same sort of bits Drums and cellos, very iconic. And then Lucas is showing up. And that's a surprise. So, um, you know, after this little, let's say, funny joke on you guys, the gamers, um, the real decision was like, okay, what's the mindset of Amicia and what's the journey she's going to have? And basically, and of course Hugo, but the beginning of the game was much more focused onto Amicia and David and Kevin wanted to bring back, you know, what was there, meaning that all the memories, all the traumas, all the very difficult situations she had to go through are still somewhere in her, but she doesn't want to express them. She doesn't want to have them. And so at the end of Innocence, we had this cue called the Wrath where you would have uh, Amicia and her friends going after the main, let's say, uh, enemy in, let's say, sort of a suicidal move. And they make it. So that's amazing. But this music that was like the wrath, the most epic in some sense, but mostly the most uh, visceral, you know, for the whole soundtrack of the previous game was the starting point here because it was like, okay, we need her to be let's say sort of like away from innocence but deep down she's still traumatized so what will happen here is that the wrath i took it and i made it something positive so you know here it's very nice medieval sort of vibe it's the south please mother said to try to exhaust him so the thing is, what you, if you remember the wrath, the wrath was going, the wrath was going like this. That's, that's the theme. And now if you're listening to the guitar, this is what it's doing. Not this one, but the next one. 
Your mother's going to wonder where we are. It's been a long road. You Two, have the right to stretch three, your legs. Four. Yes. Amicia! Da 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 so the wrath is still in her. It's good for you. Although she sort of is in denial. And that's the whole point. I like your new home. It's a castle. <laughs> All right. Look at the perfect use of baiting my castle. Yes. And I'm going to turn you into a beast. And now it's in by four. Da, 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 da. We have to hide. <laughs> yes. I'll count to ten. Then I'll come for you. The end of the music is a little bit like um, weird because we were in by three, but the guitar turns to be by four. And once again, it's to to give a sense of like she's not feeling steady. And once again. Now we are facing the first stealth um, uh, tutorial and listen to the cello and the cello is doing the exact same melody. It's very nice, it's very soothing and, and warm, but it's there and it goes like which is exactly but slower. Now. Three. He's coming, he's coming. That's the wrath, right there. And I remember we were discussing with David, the creative director, and I, I didn't know what to do about that. And, uh, and he said to me, well, don't let go what we did on Amicia on the first game. So now we have a, a little system for the stealth. The closer I get to Lukas, the bigger the percussion. Uh -huh. See? We should not be able to. Oh, yes. <laughs> if I get away. Are you there? Sir. Where could you be? So it's sort of teaching the gamers that with the music. You see, I know he's no more here because I don't hear the percussion. I don't see him, but I know he's not around. So where can he be? I'm going to get caught. Oh my God, this is like I'm playing for good. I heard the, the, the bass. There you go. Closer I get. Ah! And there you go. Goodness. End of the music. <laughs> so scared. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, I'll get back to studying now. Lucas. So it's very important uh, for me not to have music all the time, although in this game there is extensive use of music. But I think uh, the music is not here to illustrate the environment or anything but the inner emotions of the main characters and the players. So arriving close to the river, you have this tutorial for the sling. And to me, it was very important to bring back the memories of the first game and in the first game the first time you're using the sling it's where's your father the father is you know killed in the first game at the very beginning and this music is called father and for the people who did the first game they know that this is the feeling they got when they started the first game the song is called uh, father taught me which is uh by definition, what happened in the first game. So there is a nostalgia here for everybody, Amicia, but also the players. Oh, 
Now, of course, they're kids, so we want them to, you know, have some fun. So now the same melody is used in a much brighter and joyful way. As soon as Tona says boom, ploof, I don't remember, then the music switches. He's gonna do it. On the ploof, it starts. You see, if you don't do anything, there you go, boom, yeah. So, do you recognize the theme now? That's the wrath. So once again, Amicia, she's she's deep, you know, deeply connected with this theme, because basically that's the trauma, and the sling. Although she's having fun right now, is a constant reminder of what happened to her. Here comes the cannibal! Oh no, Hugo, take cover! <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, boys. You won. They surrendered. Surrender accepted! Ooh, I feel evil around us. Hmm, it's a bit dark. Come on, my king. They don't expect us to sneak in. Yes. So how did we choose when the music should play or not? It was uh, always a conversation with David and Kevin. Are you hurt? No. Like we could have started here, but it would have been too early. That's enough for today. Yes. Amicia, there are food and clothes. People live here. I was having meetings with them every week. Uh, and of course, with the Just audio director Aurélien, you know, on a daily basis, we were discussing. You smell that. And now you're opening the door, and uh, yes. and this sort of texture will happen. Just a ominous what? sound. It's, burned. it's recent. These baskets and their beehives. But why are they burned? I don't the, know. The choice was not to have something with cello, because we wanted the cellos at a very strategic moment and it's none of what's going to happen include cellos this way. <sighs> always super smooth from the gameplay to the cutscenes the music never stops you feel like it's very natural hey! so what's this is synth How many of you are there? wait we didn't mean to trespass we fell here by accident we'll leave if now drums I don't know what's happening here, but we have nothing to do with it. Lies! You bloody things! I'll cut you to pieces! Run! So it's drums and synth. We need an exit! Oh. He's still behind us! Keep an eye out for an exit! <laughs> Through here! He won't follow! Quick! Now you're hiding and listen how the music will stop. Only to come back. And this time with cellos, and for something that is very brutal. Stop! Have Leave it to me! I beg you! No! Please. Should have thought of that before you not stole from us. That's the cellos. That's how we make sure they don't come back. I lost two. A boy and a girl. So don't forget that the music is super loud. Uh, no. It's by design here. That it's for you to hear it better. We well, kill them if you find them. And now the previous uh, cello during the hide and seek um, that was playing the the wrath is back, but this time in a very different way, very dark and uh, stressful. Also, the system starts to happen. So, yes, quick. the closer you get to someone, the bigger the percussion for this system. Let's go. What, what you've learned. With Lucas, he's now for real life, let's say. Listen. See how big? He's going away. Much lighter. So the feeling of proximity is very clear for players. Now, one thing that I will develop throughout all the chapters. So here, the, the theme, the wrath is stopped. You can hear it. 
there is no more. And when I'll open this door, we will hear a traumatic uh, descending line, da, 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 which is the insanity of Amicia starting to work on her. Because um, as we will go through the game, you will see how, let's say, her own sanity is challenged and she loses it at some point. So listen to the, the cello, the high pitched cello. I don't feel well, Matthias. I don't give a damn. It's <laughs> whatever. You know what I mean? I'll handle it. You hear it? So that's the uh, the insanity happening. So the system, well, very easy. Once again, same thing with the percussions. You know, if I get closer, louder. Very efficient system. Insanity coming back. This is all on you! We're going to have to climb up. Quietly. Donna! Get your damn ass over here right now! Get the life out of you! Oh no. This is where Donna lives. Maybe he's still away. I hope so. Let's See, the, the music is sort of like acting on, on its own depending where I am. But it's it's very natural, you know, the, the drums, the cellos here, the switch, drums, because he's very close. Okay. So the big percussion is here. Somebody is around. Very scary. So you're learning. You need to throw this. Let's go. And now the percussion will disappear. Yes, we have to be more careful. There you go. So this tension is staying because they're looking for you and it will be released soon. There you go. He's probably hiding somewhere. Let me see the bot. That would work. So basically it's quite straightforward. I mean, we're just following Oops. If I throw a him. We're learning all of the tools we have. Here it was a, a conversation like, I didn't know what to do because basically a few meters away they're gonna get caught. And so you hear the percussions no more here. No, they've locked it. Maybe there's another way. There's a lot more here. But be very careful. Don't worry. So sending over you go. And uh, passing this door, the percussion will be back, although there is no enemies. But it's just to add a little tension that's not there. I'm tricking you guys. Um, so you feel like there is a threat. Here you go. We need a way out. We can't let them hurt him. He'll manage. We must leave, Hugo. They'll kill us if they catch us. That's very scary. And it's just because we know that you're going to meet with these guys. And uh, once again, we go from this music to the uh, cutscene music. Oh, please! You were Dad's biggest mistake, but I will fix it! So basically, the uh, idea here is that Amicia is going to get hurt, and Hugo will uh, unfortunately release 
the rats onto these two guys. No, we just arrived. So Listen, it's our fault if he was late. You have no right to be here. The intention was uh, build up something, but then focus on Hugo and the rats. And there's this sound that came from the first game when the first time you see the Chateau d'Ombrage and there's the the lightning and uh, the music goes like them, you know which is the signature and so it's now on Hugo and you see the choir is entering This signature. So th that was like the line for uh, getting Hugo to trigger something, which was, let's say, projected into this dream. And as you can hear, I mean, all of this is brand new. You don't know what's going on. This bird, which is a phoenix, which is completely, you know, unreal. And you have these voices that stay like there. Ooh. And it's this sort of sustain as a question. Like, we don't know exactly what's going on. Amicia? Of course, the Macuna is back and very strong. Don't hurt me. So the motif is back as well. Where are we? There you go. No. It's starting again. I need help. So the concept of the dream, you know, we it was a very difficult um scene for us because Nothing much happens, but everything is there. The whole game sort of is there. And uh, it was something to bring Hugo to think that the solution is at the end of the dream, the water. And this island is a celebration and everything is wonderful. Uh, but in the meantime, there is a threat and it's getting over onto him, but he's sort of talks to it, to the threat in order to sort of control it. And he doesn't know exactly what's going on. And at the end, he realizes that, I mean, he thinks that to go to this island is the, the solution for him to get healed. And it was, um, you know, for the colors. So it was the choir. No more cellos, except for the macula, of course, you know, but the choir now is the macula in a sense that it's, you know, the cello is the bad macula, let's say, and the choir is pretending to be the good macula, if I may, you know, the, the disease and, and it's calling Hugo, it's calling and it's, you know, celebrating Hugo to be there. And basically Hugo doesn't know, but the call is not a friendly call, but he thinks it is. So the music is trying to encapsulate all of this. Wait! Wait for me! Are you the only one here? Where's Amicia? No! Don't go! So the interesting part is number one, the lyrics here are just oh, hey, oh, yeah, 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 things like this, because we wanted to have something very like from the nature. We didn't want to humanize this like it's a call from the nature. And also all the notes that you hear, like all of these are uh, actual harmonics of, you know, the root note. So it's a very natural sound hearing this root note 
And all of this up there are the harmonics. It's nature. I need my sister and my mommy. So of course, as you can see, the players can stay as long as they want here and the music will wait for them. And we need to think about this all the time. Now, when you will see the tree and all the, the flowers and things in the air, this is when, you know, the first sort of like, oh, wonderful place it is, feeling. So uh, now it's going to be some like spoiler, but I guess if you're watching this video, you've played the game. I hoped you did. Um, the thing is in um, Innocence, yeah, you see the call like sort of like, come, 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 come. And the in Innocence, Amicia at some point is going after Hugo in a sort of a bad trip, like a bad dream. And she's walking and there is this very low like poof, 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 poof. And this is what we're gonna have at the end of the game, this very game as well. But it was already there. In this dream, you hear it and it tells you exactly what's gonna happen. Listen. asking it to stop so it's stopping he has this power to stop see stops and then he's asking what do you want what do you want and so the voices are calling come 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 you know and next It's very hard. Is this dying? And for those who know, you know, this tree is a reflection of the final tree, if you know what I mean. And now, the feeling of being healed. So the voices and everything. It's going away. It's the water. You saved me. Thank you. Can I come back here? Or with someone? The amazing choir, the Estonian Philharmonic Chamber Choir. Amazing. So this dream had to be something very unique for the players and basically as you can see there is not much to do for the gameplay and uh, and it was uh, very difficult uh, to approach it because it had to be both you know uh, let's say scary but mostly uh, and thrilling and engaging in a sense like curiosity mysterious you know sort of like what's going to happen and it feels like positive and and then no not so much but then in the end it's the salvation so it required a lot of projection as well because david the creative director 
when we were discussing the music, the style of the music for this in the choir, I was like, man, I, I think, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. It's going to feel very like organic and very natural. And those voices will go like in waves and in, in the, you know, the, 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 the cello, the, not the cello, the, the tenors, the altos, the sopranos, the basses, they're going to be like, oh, you know, singing uh, in ways that even me, I don't know how to do at the time. I didn't know how to. So, um, so it was very funny because he said to me, he said, well, Olivier, we might be the only two person to like it, but at least uh, we can do it, you know? So, so it's, it's very good to work with people like this that have this sort of like artistic projection and a trust, you know, into the shared vision, vision of what we want to do. And uh, that's something that uh, I very much uh, cherish working with them. They'll make up for it then. So here you can hear that um, there is no music because you know, the dream had to be digested. It was something very marvelous, I think. And uh, to go back to be grounded into reality is very important. Even more that now they're getting uh, not ambushed, but it's a checked up. And of course, something wrong is going to happen. And, Hello. you know, that was like the trigger for for starting the game to show what the game was about. Not something that would be as stealthy as the first one, but rather more action based and having Amicia more, um, let's say, uh, a warrior uh, based on what happened from the first game, of course, uh, but also for the gameplay to offer to the players different ways, different approaches in how they want to play. They still can play stealth and not kill anybody, but the option is there. And, you know, Amicia is ready for it. There you go. So, of course, that's the theme of the, the rune, but very harsh. Search the fields. Yes. Go away. So this is the new feel of a Black Tail. You know, we had like the choir previously, and now we have this sort of much more um, driven music. So it was fun because when we did the first version, uh, David said to me, those cellos. He said, I want them even more. I mean, you don't hear it because you don't have the previous version, but at the end they go like, you know, he said, I really want this sort of harsh and um, Sort of like, you know, she doesn't want to be there, of course. She has to, that's the drive, you know, ta 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 of course. But uh, she really, uh, whoops, she really don't, don't want to be here. And as you can see, the system here is not uh, active the same way. It's very narrati narrative driven here. Um, because it's not about being hidden now. It's not about all of this. Oh my God, yeah. So, I mean, uh, narrative, so it's very easy to game, you know, it's on purpose. Uh, you can never do this if you're playing for real. Uh, so now you're going to enter the field and the musical is going to ramp up and ramp up and ramp up. And what is the ramp up for? The ramp up is not that she's getting closer to her mom. Of course, this is one thing. The ramp up is that she feels the need for the sling. And this time is not for fun. This time is to kill. And she doesn't want that. And that's the, the biggest, let's say, um, statement we had together. Like, oh, she doesn't want to do this. But somehow, and this is why it's, it's very smart uh, from them, is, you know, for the players to finally get the sling is a feeling of like, you know, like, oh, yeah, you thought I was like the first time you see I'm not. And this is what she feels as well. You know, there is a sort of catharsis in violence that she feels, but she doesn't want this. So 
difficulties after difficulties, but you know, it's ramping up. Everything is. When I press A, you hear the cellos going like. You know. And now, she takes the sling and li listen carefully to uh, how the music switches to something like. Let's say, once again, the explosion of violence, you know, the free the monster that Amicia has in her. Um, but the, the, the rising up of the music is very harsh. Like, you can hear the cellos, like, screaming, like, because she doesn't want to do this. She just don't. So it's going to start when I press this button here. And there we go. And now you release. And this is the theme of the wrath, of course. This is a very, like, for gamers, you know, it feels very good in some way. Because she... F I'm not saying she's feeling good about this. But she, she she's releasing her... Her inner feeling. You know. And there is sadness into this. It's super sad that she's doing this. Now she's gonna free her mom. Once again, you know, super fluid from gameplay to cutscene. I've been doing this for 20 years, so you know this. And so here you're gonna hear the voices again. Calling Hugo. It's the shock. It's over. It's all right. That's the voices calling Hugo. And you have the main title. The main title discussion was quite interesting. We didn't know if it should be after the dream, at the you know, at the end of the dream or at the end of the, the chapter here. Uh, but I think that they took the right decision to make it at the end here because, you know, it's like the call with the voices and then the iconic uh, sound of uh, the Makula here. So that's it for uh, the first chapter of uh, A Plague Tale Requiem. I hope you've learned some things. I hope it's... Uh, interesting for you um it will be like it's the beginning so not much to say somehow but as we go through the game there is so much more to to say and to explore and i'll do this uh, as the day days go thank you for watching see you soon merci